Okay, so now we are looking at this example of a vector space r to the r. So it's, as a set, it's a set of all functions from reals to reals. So I use all functions and take any real number as an input and give a real number as an output. So you write that as r to the r equals f, all those f's from r to r. That's the set. Okay. Then we need an addition and we need a multiplication to make it a vector space. If we define addition as function f plus function g at x equals f of x plus g of x, then the function f plus g of x takes in any real numbers and input and its output is a sum of two real numbers, so it is also a member of r to the r. So what's going on here is that it's making a distinction between adding functions and adding numbers. So if you take two functions, f and g, uh, and those are functions from reals to reals, so they're in that set, okay, that means that f is a function from reals to reals, and g is a function from reals to reals. They take real numbers and give real numbers as output. What does it mean to add those two functions together? Well, certainly when you add the two functions together, we hope to get another function from reals to reals, right? Well, what is that function? It's a function that when you put in, this function f plus g is a function that when you put in an x, the x that comes out, you find it by evaluating the function f at x, evaluating the function g at x, and adding them together, right? So an example of this would be, so a, sort of a, a nice example, an easy to express example would be, suppose you have the sine function, right? And you have the cos function. So you see I'm writing them without the, without the variable, okay? So these are functions from real numbers to real numbers. I mean, sine and cos, they only, the output is only between minus one and one, but that's fine. The, the, the codomain, the place where the outputs are, are real numbers. Now, if you add sine and cos, and cos, you get another function from reals to reals, of course, right? What function do you get? Well, you get that function that when you put an x in, what it gives you out is sine x plus cos x. Right? So this sine x plus cos x, that thing is not a function from reals to reals. It's just a real number, right? The thing that's a function from reals to reals is this, whoops, is this sine plus cos. That's the function. Sine x plus cos x, or sine plus cos evaluated at x, that's the result of putting x in. So we've got to, when you're dealing with function spaces, we've got to carefully distinguish between functions and the outputs of functions, the values the functions take. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for scalar multiplication. We define scalar multiplication as alpha f at x equals alpha f at x. I mean, it sounds nonsense when you say it, but what it's saying is that you take a scalar, which is a real number, right? If you multiply that scalar by a function, okay, you should get a new function. What is that function? It's a function that when you evaluate it at x, okay, when you put an x in, what you get out is the old function f evaluated at x, okay, that value multiplied by alpha. So you see I put an extra bracket here, over there, which is not necessary, but means exactly the same thing. Okay, so here, here we have a function times by alpha, then it's evaluated at x. Here and here we have the function f evaluated at x, and then that number, that real number, times by alpha. At any rate, the point is that this definition then gives you, makes um, alpha f itself into a function from reals to reals. Okay, so in this way, with addition, we have addition. We have an addition of functions, a vector addition of functions, and a vector and a scalar multiplication of functions. And I'm saying vector, right? So this is a vector space, but these things are functions. So this is a vector space where the vectors, the so-called vectors, are actually functions, and that's fine, right? I mean, often we thought of vectors as things in R three, like these ones I'm looking at now. But if we go back to the definition we had of a vector space, we call the set V 
blah, 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 vector space and set them to vectors if we can combine any two vectors through addition to produce a new vector. So it's closed under, under addition. And we can multiply any element u by scalar to produce a new vector, closed on scalar multiplication. Nothing there, there's nothing there said about r to the n or r to the 3 or vectors having components, anything like that. All that's said is that they are these things that you can add to each other and that you can multiply by scalars, right? And so functions are, can be perfectly good vectors themselves. And so this is going to be important in lots of the theory of this course, that we don't think that, well, we, you can think of vectors as like something in R3, right? When you're just having a picture in your head of what's going on. But when you actually do the proofs, when you actually theorize about them, you don't, you don't want to do that. That makes things more complicated than necessary, actually. You want to try and get used to theorizing about vectors as these abstract things that live in a vector space and, and, and can be added to each other and can be multiplied by scalars, right? OK, um, now this next example I'm going to skip because it's not going to be used or useful in this course. It's just given there as an example of, the, of you know, how vector spaces can be different from what you might think. But it's not important for now. Uh, so there's that example, blah, 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 blah. OK, and that's the end. That's, uh, I'll go to learning combinations in the next video.